it doesn't follow at all. Oh, I'm trying not to lose track my track of mine here. Um, so theism doesn't sign away on that. It does sign away on metaphysical naturalism. Okay, this is what I was saying. Um, the track record. Methodological naturalism does have a track record. It's good. But it's metaphysical naturalism does not have a track record. It, it doesn't explain anything. It, ex it assumes things. And being that we are in the physical world, we are physical beings, I think it's perspective bias to say that's all that there is. And it's also, isn't that a good example of induction? Saying that one of the things you were saying was that um, you believe the Big Bang will also be the result of a natural process. Um, that's induction you're saying since point A, point B, point C are all the results of a natural process, then point D will be as well. It could very well be. We don't know. And theism, I know this is pretty frustrating. We just don't, we believe in a natural world. We believe in natural processes causing other natural processes. We just think at some point there's a beginning to all that. We just don't know where it's going to begin. I mean, we could get past the Big Bang and there could have been a natural process that caused the Big Bang. Technically, that's not really a threat to theism. It's, we, we just don't know where it begins and ends, and, and atheists don't know that either. Um, and I gave you an example of a, I gave you an example of a, a, a Ford car for that, for that reason. And um, what I want to say is that mechanism does not negate agent at all. You take a Ford automobile and you ask yourself, uh, is Henry Ford in the car? And of course he's not in the car. Does the car need Henry Ford's hand or presence to uh, operate? No. And um, in, in that example, the natural world is the Ford car. So, I mean, if, if you're explaining what happens to gas when it goes into the, um, into the uh, intake manifold and, and, you know, so on and so forth, we're just, uh, we're just really describing um, portions of the whole event. The whole event would be the car itself. I mean, just because we get to the point, you know, we, we can show what happens when gas enters the uh, combustion chamber, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that doesn't mean we can assume the, the entire car or that it has no builder or anything just because we're looking at a portion of it. Um, the thing I'd like to say on this is that um, you mentioned um, just, I don't know, let me, let me explain this in a, in a, in a better way. Um, as a, as a naturalist, as a metaphysical naturalist, not a method, I, I know you're a method, methodological naturalist. I mean, you believe in the scientific method. Uh, any scientist believes in that. But as a metaphysical naturalist, you're kind of, you put yourself in a position, you have to, uh, at this point, you must posit infinite naturalism. You must just say that there are always processes, there are always physical laws, and they just are. If at any point you take those off of the radar, you have to give an ex explanation of how they got there. So you, you, you're in an unavoidable situation. You have to posit infinite naturalism. They have to have always been there. As a theist, I don't. I can say that natural process itself was not always there. I mean, I know this is an assumption. I'm not trying to argue that. But there's a little more leeway there. I can say that, well, it's there because something unnatural put it there but as as a as a metaphysical metaphysical naturalist you have to posit infinite naturalism it has to always be there are just processes there are just laws and to me and my mind i don't know about you but that's not an explanation i think i know a lot of atheists will say that well if it's true then it's true but i think the human mind is especially when it comes to scientific inquiry, we're going to want to explore that at some point. Well, how, how come it's so? You know, I'm already thinking that now. What Physical laws, um, natural processes just are. Well, what was the first natural process? What got this whole ball rolling? I mean, there's, there's so many questions. I don't think that's a good explanation. I think a prime mover is a better explanation. I mean, at this point, I, I can't really argue. It's just a matter of what, what you're willing to accept over what you're not willing to accept. Um, 
I just don't, I just have a big problem with infinite naturalism. Just infinite natural processes getting us to where we are. I don't believe it. And, uh, and basically that's my response. Again, I just want to say that theism does not have to sign away its rights to methodological naturalism. But it, it does sign away its rights to metaphysical naturalism. It never really had rights to that anyway. That's, that's an opposing uh, philosophical view. It's not science. So, again, I want to say uh, part two of your video. There's a lot of uh, good stuff there. Um, those are valid questions, uh, valid concerns. Um, I think there are people that are looking into that. I just have never read up on that, you know, looking into the fall. I've thought about that because... Technically, it's kind of like after they ate the fruit, what happened, you know, um, everything just went amok. I, I don't know. I've never really looked at it. I don't even know if we can now. I just, you know, I just, I just uh, wanted to get back to you with a response and, and just kind of uh, illustrate how there, there were two things that were being conflated here. So hopefully this will do the trick. And all right. Thanks.